Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Mission Accepted podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited. We have an incredible expert that has come back with us. This is absolutely class two with Kathy Holt. And if you did not listen to lesson one, it's okay. Stay tuned in. Take your notes. You're going to be advanced when you go back to listen to, to you know, class one. Um, look, we're all here taking missions. And whatever you're doing in your life, whether you are you know, with a partner who's taking a mission, whether you're in a profit, nonprofit, whether you are um, an author, whether you are in the world of entrepreneurship, whether you are doing, oh, you know, a philanthropy project, whether you just feel that your life is a mission, whether you're like, I signed up and I'm here, like, and maybe you're here to help other people in their mission. I mean, I think that's what this whole show and these platforms are about. And a lot of people that come onto the show, these are people that are on a mission to help people make their mission easier, better, faster, smoother, whatever. And that's what Kathy's going to do with us. I'm so excited. She's been sharing the concept of leadership and she's an international speaker. She is an, she's incredible motivator. I was just so touched by the story that she told in our last session together. And um, you're going to really love her because she's going to talk about the concept of leadership. And sometimes people go, yeah, that's me. And sometimes people go, mm, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Sometimes people sign up for that. They're like a class on leadership. I'm going all the way. And then sometimes you guys find yourself in positions to lead or you started off your business as an entrepreneur. Now, guess what? You need a team to make it go because you're so successful. And now you're in a position where you're giving direction and you're running staff meetings and you're doing all sorts of interesting things that you may not have signed up for. You just want to be a successful entrepreneur, right? The one thing that I love, I mean, it is a word that is going to stick with me for a while is in our pre-show, we were having a conversation and Kathy is all about inspiring women to be change agents. She really believes that women leaders are incredible change agents and that is part of her mission. And so that was an easy one to have her on the show. So I'm going on and on a little bit, filling people in on our first time together, talking about what is a leader you know, how does that happen and kind of what's the premise for that? And Kathy, I know we're going to dig a little deeper. So maybe if you can just share with people, you know, what is it you do and um, where you're kind of coming in from and we'll kind of get in, we'll kind of get into it. Okay. Thank you so much, Deb. Um, as Deb said, my mission really that I have is become my passion um, is really promoting women as change agents. But part of that is helping women realize they can be change agents. They probably already are change agents. They just sometimes don't recognize it within themselves because it's part of the daily routine or the daily grind or, you know, the, the daily sometimes chaos that we're in that we don't take the time to stop and really reflect on the fact that we are making change and that we are actually leading change. So in my work, that's where I um, support women and help them recognize one that they are probably leaders and how they can actually become better leaders with certain strategies, you know, um, enhancing certain traits or certain skills that they have. And that's where I can be helpful in helping them create a more defined path in their leadership journey rather than just having it happenstance. Well said, well said. So has there, I mean, you yourself, um, obviously you work with many leaders where, like in what circumstances, like what, when, you know, when people come to you or when women come to you kind of, what's some of their main challenges, maybe what's some of their, the, the things that are going on and where do they come in from? Like who, what kind of women are you working with? I work with all levels of, of women from grassroots poor women, which is a lot of my international work to just everyday real life women that are just making it through the day sometime to entrepreneurs and people who had a great idea, ran with it, and now all of a sudden are in a leadership position that they maybe didn't quite plan for or, or they're a little perplexed about how to handle it and navigate that position more effectively. Yeah, I think that's the words, right? More effectively. And um, I don't know about you, but I was sharing before as well as someone who's, I mean, my career has been 
30 years of being an entrepreneur. Now, how that looks like or how that showed up, very different. I mean, I owned a private health studio. We were all holistic practitioners and we studied holistic practices. Well, that was a really kind of easier, you know, place to navigate because we all meditated before work. We all lived holistically. You know, we'd be massaging each other and we had our staff meetings in a circle. Mm -hmm. And predominantly it was, we all had a great respect for uh, what each other did because we also did it ourselves. So we knew the level of study. We knew the level of commitment. We knew the level of what we had to do to be able to be, you know, excel at what it is. That was easier. Then there's been an, there's been other times where I've been in business. Like I'm fairly well known in the direct sales industry where, you know, it's a very different situation. You have people coming into your organization. No one's filling out an application form. Everyone's in at different levels. They're coming in from different countries. And it's difficult, I think, to be an accidental leader or try to navigate, navigate those. Um, what are some of the things that, you know, I know it's about awakening your inner leader when you talked about that. So can you give a little bit more of what you mean by awakening your inner leader? Oh, yes, I would. I would love to, actually. Um, I think, though, I'd like to preface it with the, the, the thought that leadership is a journey. Um, it takes time. It takes awareness, um, both uh, inner awareness and also being able to evaluate your environment, the issues that are, you're confronting, um, other people, kind of having that that spiny uh, sense of what are other people thinking? What are other people feeling? Are they comfortable? Are they not comfortable? And those are all really good. Those are all qualities that women usually have. So that's right from the beginning, you already have some of these traits that are very essential to becoming or, or leading other people. Um, it's not about titles. It's not about positions. It's about inspiring and influencing others to achieve a common goal. So when you identify something that's important to you, it's about finding other people that might have something similar or have a similar interest. Okay. Okay. Um, what would you say to, you know, and I think we've all probably come across this, um, where you may feel like you're in a leadership position. There's other people that are in a leadership position. They may be in a higher leadership position. There may be a company where um, there's a little bit of hierarchy or even within a, even within an infrastructure of an incorporated company or what have you. Um, and someone is nervous to state their claim. I mean, I'm sure you've had that experience. I know I've definitely had that experience. Um, what would you say to someone that, you know, that inner leader, we hear it like, say something, say something, you know, or um, mm -hmm. reframe that. Or um, I think that was my idea that someone else just repeated and what would you say in those situations? I would actually go back a little bit and say that to best um, affect those situations, there might be a little bit of homework. I mean, because you've probably already been in one of those situations and kind of went, oh, I didn't do what I thought I should. You know, that self-talk that we get into afterwards, like mm -hmm. I should have said this or I should have acted that way. So I would think that the the thing to start with is really just some self-reflection. Um, and that's not scary. It's not like you have to go off on a retreat to do this. <laughs> you know, it's just taking it the time and calming your mind to look at one, if you've been in a situation like that, what triggered you? What, what part of your values or your passion did that maybe not connect with? or did connect with, and you wanted to say something and you didn't. So I think that's um, that's kind of the first step in, in interacting in those kinds of situations. And once you know that, then it's easier to feel comfortable with saying something, standing up for something, because you've already figured out for yourself how that integrates with your values and your passions. So I think that would be the first step. And then when you're in those situations, um, listening to that little voice, 
Um, I, I actually have been in certain situations that are repetitive. And so I have come up with some catchphrases that I start off with so that I feel like I'm, you know, I'm more comfortable. It's kind of like if you're a writer, they say the blank page is the scariest thing that you can confront. So you just write anything on the top of the page so that it's not a blank page anymore. So having some, just some, some phrases that you use or that you're comfortable with to start the conversation is often very helpful in those situations. Oh, that's great. That's actually great advice on two sides because gosh, that, and it makes perfect sense when you talk about that. It's, it's like uh, putting the elephant in the living room. Sometimes I say to people and they're like, I'm like, I just put that first. I, I, I lead with the thing that I'm the most nervous with. And then the rest of the meeting's perfect and gravy and we see where it goes from there. So yeah. have you had an experience that you can share with us a little bit on, you know, maybe something with a client, obviously not their name or what have you, but right. where there's been um, a situation that you're like, wow, this is, this is, this is creating those change agents that you talk about. Cause I just, I mean, I think that should be a new mantra. I really honestly think that that should be a hashtag that, you know, maybe you come up with a, a mantra that you tell your clients in the morning, like I'm a change agent, I'm a change, you know, yeah. like the Louise Hay affirmations where we're like, I love ourselves. I love ourselves. I remember, you know, thank, thank goodness for Louise Hay and Melody Beattie through the eighties for helping with the codependency of life. And you're like, I love myself. I love myself, but I'm like, I'm a change agent, but has there, is there anything that you can kind of give an example of where um, someone had used you, like, you know, came to you for a situation and had an experience where? Um, yeah, one that jumps to my mind immediately is, is an international example. And um, it's a woman in the Honduras who was, um, she lives in a rural area and they were suffering um, a drought and food was scarce and they had big agribusinesses coming in and trying to take over a lot of their local farming, their, their community farms that were actually feeding people because with the drought, there was not a lot um, being trucked in or shipped in from someplace else. And so she got together, you know, she rounded up some of her other um, friends and other women who are farmers because in those situations often it is the women who are the farmers because the men go to work in the cities so that they can send money home and they decided that they would pool whatever resources they have they bought up some of their small plots of land that they were using but weren't technically theirs. So they wanted to make it technically theirs. And they created a, a, a huge, what's now a huge uh, collaboration of women farmers that now actually exports, they export food to the cities because they are so effective in growing it. And they also created a collective where they feed people who might be, you know, having difficulties or or their particular small plot didn't render what it should have rendered. And to me, those are just incredible stories. They're, they're stories they saw need. And they this was one more of survival, mm -hmm. but it was a need nonetheless. And they stepped up and they did it. And she was the one that spearheaded it because she just thought somebody had to do it and it, it, she wasn't born a leader that wasn't her role in life but she she and now quite honestly she, she actually speaks um on the global stage and UN meetings and everything about how to do that for other grassroots women around the world so that let's talk about that so uh yay 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 I I think that um that really changes the paradigm of what some people think of as a leader right mm -hmm. Um, they think of corporation, they think of, yes, a born leader. And I know, Kathy, that I heard you true and true in the first conversation that we had that it's not true that everybody is a born leader. It doesn't mean that you can't be a born leader. And I'm sure you have great qualities and, and those were naturally, you know, instinctual, but um, anyone can grab the skills of a leader. You can learn the skills of a leader, but I love what you do, honestly, and that's the strategy of the skills of a leader because sometimes you don't see what's coming and if you're going to make change you know what does that look like and how do you hold that space and how do you take care of yourself and how do you hear your words on the inside 
but also you you are in charge of a collective that has many people. Yeah. And I think one of what I uh, typically start off with um, with my with clients at at all different levels, you know, um, whether it is in a corporation or an entrepreneur or just somebody, you know, worrying about what's going on in their schools, you know, for their kids, is the first thing is that self reflection. What do you do well? What are you know? What do you enjoy doing? What is your passion? What really you know um, triggers you? And not in a negative way, but in a positive mm -hmm. way, and then. After that, you have to decide or look at what's your goal? What is the actual outcome that you're trying to achieve? For these women in this rural area, they needed to feed themselves. So that was their goal. And then after you look at the goal, you have to start looking at who can help you reach your goal. And sometimes that's a piece that's a little missing because we go off, you know, we, we, we go to a march. Well, I've participated in a lot of marches in my life for women, <laughs> but did it really change anything? Probably not, but it helped me because it made me feel good and it energized me. So that's mm -hmm. that was a positive thing. But you have to get strategic and you use that word too. You have to start looking, thinking strategically, who, who is really making those decisions? Who do you have to influence in order to get the change you want so that you're you're focusing your energy into that pathway because we all get burned out. I mean, and if you start going off in all different directions and not really understanding the goal you're trying to achieve and who can help you get there, then you are probably going to burn out. And then the last thing is just, you know, what skills do you have? We all have skills, um, whether it's adaptability, talking with people, being able to, to get people to collaborate, being, you know, a, a gatherer of people, uh, being a creative, innovative problem solver. We all have these different skills that, that I think different aspects of, of a woman's life have helped us create. Once again, I don't believe they're all innate. Sometimes they are, but these are things that we've had to, to um, embrace or we didn't get things done. You know, mm -hmm. my daughter had a stroke when she was 18. Um, it was very debilitating. And I had to really reach inside of me to see what, what skills did I have to deal with this, this challenge, this, the, the, what was a crisis in my life and in hers. And how could I adapt? How could I um, lead her through her um, process in the beginning when she was so devastated. Um, and so I had to really do some self-reflection on what skills did I have to manage that change mm -hmm. and come out of it in a positive way for both her and I. So, you know, and the last thing really is just overcoming your fear. Um, you know, we, I, I, talked about this in the first session about, you know, growing up in the seventies or coming of age in the seventies. And, you know, you're not supposed to speak up, you, you know, don't rock the boat, you know, being kind of almost voiceless and having to overcome the fear of just even using my voice for the first time and saying, no, I don't like that. That was a big thing you know, back then yeah. to say something like that. <laughs> so just overcoming that fear. And once you've done it, it gets easier. It really does because you start looking at some of the strategies and some of the skills and, and, and reinforcing those skills and learning more about those skills um, and using them. And when you start using them, then you definitely become better at them. One question that I'd love to ask you, because obviously I talk to a lot of people and there is a lot of listeners that we have that are leading their own company, no matter how big or how small, leading this team, delegation can be a challenge. And you said a magic word that actually stops people from wanting to grow, I think, many times because they can't see it through it. And I don't know if it's whether it's scary to delegate or what that's going to cost or what have you. But um, a lot of times people like they don't want to own being a leader because they they correlate it to the word burnout. 
yeah. right? They call you, you talked about burnout and I don't know if there's anything that you can give anyone out there listening. Um, some of the, some of the things that you can do to not burn out or that leadership doesn't have to mean that you're going to be depleted. Like just, a you know, not. Yeah. I think that's, that's one of the biggest, um, fears that especially women have because we are juggling so many balls 90 percent of our lives um and i think what i can use maybe the the story of what happened to my daughter for that was a big lesson for me because being a caregiver i mean she at one point was totally paralyzed on her left side and couldn't do anything on her left side so being a caregiver was a major portion of my life at that point. And you talk about delegating. I was one of those. And I think a lot of us as women are, I can do it all. I, you know, that whole super women, you know, we can do it all, you know, hear me Mm -hmm. roar, all those things. (laughs) Well, once again, I had some dear friends who really kind of just, and I'm not good at that. I wasn't up until then good at delegating. I was going to do it all. And I had some dear friends that just took me aside and said, Kathy, you cannot do this all. You have to learn to depend and get help from others. And here's what we're going to do for you. And they set up all kinds of, you know, care schedules and they, you know, they made it so that I left that house and went, I I started painting because that way I didn't have to think about my situation, you know, and I was fortunate to have those women who had already been someplace challenging, understand that you cannot do it alone, that you do have to delegate, and they were happy to do it. And most times what I've learned from that whole situation is people like to be asked to do something significant. They really do. Sometimes they're just as fearful about stepping in as you might have been beforehand. And when you ask them something specific and, you know, define expectations, especially in the workplace, most often they want to be part of your team. They're excited to be included instead of excluded because you just didn't think to talk to them because people just naturally want to be part of a group. And that's what delegation is, really. It's making somebody part of your group. And they usually are very thankful. All right. That's a great place to 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 end off. It's hopeful. So you can do it. <laughs> Kathy, where can people reach out to you? Um, well, they can they can um, email me at Kathy with a C, C-A-T-H-Y, at Catherine Holt dash Holt uh, dot com. And, you know, they can also go to my website. There's there's opportunities on the website to click and get in touch with me. And um, I would just I'd love to work with I love to work with everybody. I mean, I really <laughs> am my, this is my passion, if you can't tell. And, um, you know, we need more change makers. I'm our change agents. Um, I'm kind of aging out at times, I feel like, you know, that burnout. And we definitely need more women to step up and speak out. Fantastic. Well, and on that note, look at you amazing listeners. You know how this goes. You know how this goes. Um, If you want to be where Kathy's sitting and you are reaching out and so continue to reach out if you haven't been part of our community yet before, we thank you for listening today and sharing this podcast. And if you want to be where Kathy is, or you have any questions for her or for us here in the studio, deb at debdrummond.com. And we have, and Kathy is part of this incredible movement that we've got going, which is all about the remembrance of International Women's Day and women and those that support women being in solidarity on the 8th of March. Um, We do that by celebrating a complimentary, come and refuel yourself, be inspired and motivated and educated on the 8th of every month all the way up until International Women's Day 2024 and with that we have then 10 more pod or 10 more podcasts 10 more summits that you can come and listen to women that are sponsoring and sharing around this whole concept of taking care of yourself on International Women's Day so if you are interested in the 262 project and you'd like to speak or you'd like to be in the book or you'd like a free pass then same thing, devadubdrummond.com. So you guys are fantastic. You're the best podcast audience ever. And we are certainly looking forward to part three. So if you have not heard part three, we are going to be talking a little bit about 
the imposter syndrome and putting that to rest once and for all. So thank you until we meet again, which will be this week. You be well and stay groovy. Thank you.